This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Automakers are reporting their second quarter earnings this week, and their numbers are going to be grim. In Japan, Nissan announced it expects to lose $4.5 billion. Mitsubishi announced that it's mostly abandoning the European market and will lose $1.3 billion this fiscal year. In the U.S., GM, Ford, and FCA will probably announce losses that collectively top $10 billion. But there is one bright spot in Europe. PSA just reported that it made a net profit of nearly $700 million for the first half of the year. Carlos Tavares, the CEO of PSA, says they're seeing especially strong sales of the new Peugeot 208 and the Opel Corsa. Tavares is seen as an exceptional executive in the industry, and these results are going to make him look better still. Now let's jump over to South Korea, where car sales set a record in June, partly because taxes on cars were about to go up. But an analysis by LMC Automotive says Korea has entered an era of two-car households, and it says that's because of the coronavirus pandemic. Many Koreans are buying cars instead of using public transportation. LMC says Koreans actually see cars as a form of PPE. Unlike many other countries, South Koreans wholeheartedly embraced virus safety protocols. As a result, its auto industry never shut down, and it's now recovering faster than anywhere else. Jaguar Land Rover has a new leader. It hired former Renault CEO Terry Ballore as its new chief executive officer. He will take over starting September 10th. Ballore replaces Ralph Speth, who earlier this year announced he was retiring from the company once his contract ran out in September. Cars in the U.S. keep getting older. According to a new study from IHS Market, the average age of light vehicles in operation in the U.S is now 11.9 years, about one month older than it was in 2019. Several factors have contributed to the increase. Even though the number of vehicles being scrapped is up and would lead to a drop in age, sales of new vehicles have plateaued. So with new cars accounting for a smaller share of the overall vehicle population, it's not causing the average age to decline. The pandemic is also causing owners to hang on to their vehicles longer. In the coming years, this could increase the average age of cars by as much as six months. But even though vehicles keep getting older, the U.S. vehicle population this year is estimated to hit 280 million vehicles, up 1% from 2019. IHS says this scenario could represent a big opportunity for the aftermarket and vehicle service centers. Engineer from anywhere. Perform tests from your office, lab, or living room. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, we have you covered. Our hardware and software is trusted all over the world. Global company headquartered in Troy, Michigan. Intrepid Control Systems. Cadillac filed a trademark for two more names that end in IQ, which is pronounced IC. We've reported on the Lyric SUV and the Celestic, a hand-built sedan. And now it's going after the names Optic and Symbolic. Here's our Autoline Insight. Cadillac could have easily gone into the archives for names like Eldorado or Brome, but clearly it wants to go in a new direction. And it's really hard to trademark a new name. About every natural landmass, mountain, lake, and river in Europe already has been used as a car name. So coming up with something that isn't already taken is really hard. According to Mercedes U.S. dealers, The automaker isn't just taking an axe to its lineup, it's packing it full of dynamite. They claim Mercedes will get rid of seven models, none of which have a next-generation model in the works. Those include the two-door versions of the C, E, and S class, as well as the CLS and 1GT model. Yes, we know that's only five. The others aren't clear yet, but we wouldn't be surprised to see a fastback SUV model or two go away. It's not surprising to see the coupes on the chopping block. Passenger car sales are down, but two-door models are even worse off. It's better for Mercedes to take the money it would have spent developing the new models and pump it into areas like electrification and autonomy. 
Speaking of Mercedes, it teased a new small van called the T-Class. This is the only picture, so we'll keep this short. It will be offered in a number of propulsion systems, including full electric. Mercedes already sells a small van called the Cyton, which will continue to be geared towards commercial customers, while the T-Class will focus on families. The T-Class is expected to be out in the first half of 2022. Are you interested in learning more about the new Ford Bronco? We have a terrific Autoline After Hours coming up Thursday afternoon, when our guest will be Paul Wraith, the head of design for the Bronco. How and why did they choose the styling direction they took? Join John and Gary for a front row seat on how it all came together. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Words Intelligence cites a battery recycling company that predicts 2024 will be the tipping point when global demand for lithium, cobalt, and nickel will outstrip the capacity to mine them. Lifecycle is a Canadian recycling company that says battery recycling will become critically important. It says there will be 15 million tons of waste lithium batteries by 2030. Lifecycle claims it can recycle almost 95% of the materials in a lithium battery compared to 50% for current processes. Importantly, it does not have to discharge the batteries or manually disassemble them, which drastically cuts the cost of recycling. It also predicts few EV batteries will be repurposed because the price of new batteries will come down so much that people will want new ones instead of using old ones. Two weeks ago, GM announced it was cutting the third shift at its Wentzville, Missouri plant because of high absenteeism due to worker fears over catching COVID. But now the company is backtracking on that plan and will keep the third shift operating by transferring workers from other plants to fill vacancies. GM didn't disclose how many workers it will transfer to Wentzville. But here's our Autoline Insight. GM desperately needs that plant open. It makes the Chevy Express and GMC Savannah vans, but it also builds the Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon pickups. GM needs its pickup plants up and running because that's where it makes a lot of money. We've all seen a vehicle with a bumper that was repaired in a less than professional manner. Very un-MacGyver-like. But I saw this yesterday and thought it was super clever. It's just like those folders that are held closed with a string. What do you think? And please, share any similar fun stories that you might have. I'll also add this one, just because I like it so much. This owner with a hole in their bumper stuffed it full of pretty flowers. Well, at least they were once pretty. But that wraps up this show. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you again tomorrow.